Hello and welcome to this meanwhile 10th part of the first online edition of our course Answer Set Solving in Practice. So my name is Thorsten Schaub and this is actually a master course we are running at the University of Potsdam. Now the subject of this 10th part are operational characterizations of stable models. And you may remember way back in the introductory section we introduced the immediate consequence or the TP operator that allowed us to compute the consequences of positive logic programs. At that time this operator was principally a semantic means, right? How can we capture the semantics? How can we capture stable model semantics? But now actually our interest shifts and we are interested in computation. And actually these operators, the fitting and the well-founded operators, will give us blueprints for the propagation procedures in ASP solvers. But before we delve into details, let's first look at the landscape of characterizations that we are faced with. So here's again the landscape of characterizations of stable models that we are interested in in this course. So we've seen way back in the introduction uh, the definition of stable models by means of a reduct. That was the very first characterization here. And then in the last part we looked at axiomatic characterization of stable models. And well, in one way one can say we characterize the stable models uh, in classical logic by pinning down formulas that told us which interpretations are actually models that correspond to stable models. But what is more important here is we somehow identified the properties and assign this, and assign must satisfy in order to become or to be a stable model. Because keep in mind, in a solver, you have an assignment. This assignment should represent a stable model in the end, of course, right? An assignment assigns to each variable true and false. And the question is, what are the properties that such an assignment must satisfy to be in order to be a stable model. And that's actually the purpose of this axiomatic characterization. And in fact, we learn quite a lot from this perspective. First of all, we know that such, a, such an assignment must satisfy the sufficient condition induced by the rules plainly given in the logic program. But then there is more to capture more or less the bulk of closed world reasoning, namely the necessary conditions, right? And in addition, we saw that to, in order to suppress cyclic derivations, we need loop formulas, loop conditions that help us to make sure that each atom is derived in a non-cyclic way. So these are the properties we more or less uh, distilled out of this axiomatic characterization and which we can now, to stay with the image, pour into the definition of operators that will allow us to describe propagation in ASP solvers. And this is now all about this operational characterization. So we've seen already operators but the question now is what are these operators working on because at the end we start actually from nothing right so we have an assignment that is empty or more or less where the truth value of each variable is unknown and this actually brings us to three valued or partial interpretations. Partial or three-valued interpretations provide us with a logical means to characterize the states of a computation of models or stable models. To this end, they provide us with a third truth value that stands for unknown. And so you can imagine that at the very beginning, when no computation has happened, we do not know anything. So each variable is assigned the truth value unknown. And then successively, we, 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 when, when we do more and more computations, more and more atoms get a truth value true or false. And at the very end, uh, in a successful computation, we have assigned each va uh, variable the truth value true and false, and unknown is not appearing in the final assignment or final interpretation anymore. And this is when we talk about a total interpretation, where, right? Where we only use truth value true and false. And everything before where we, there's still a single unknown is then called a partial interpretation. Now we represent these guys as pairs. So where the first argu argument T stands for the true atoms and the second for the false atoms. And then accordingly everything that is, every atom that is neither in the true nor the false atom is considered to be unknown. Well, wait a minute, you may say, we've already seen that in another disguise. Yes, you are right. We've already seen such a partial interpretation or three valued interpretations in a different representation where we talked about the lower, the lower and the upper bound, right? Here actually, we did more or less the same thing. We, had, we wanted to represent 
uh, partial interpretations. It's just that here, there we left the false atoms implicit, while here we leave the unknown atoms implicit. So keep in mind here, the, the lower bound more or less consisted as above of the true atoms, but the upper bound consisted only of the possible atoms. And then the false atoms were the ones that were impossible. This is actually how we looked at things when we derived a first algorithm for stable model computations from first principles and also when we talked about drowning we used this representation. And the, the relationship between both representations is pretty obvious, right? In the, in the, the lower or the true atoms are in both cases represented explicitly, while here we represent the possible ones and here we represent the false ones. Okay, anyway, this should not really confuse you, it just perhaps provides you with a different perspective on the notions, because I will also uh, sometimes jump back and forth, but I, I actually prefer the first representation now. First of all, because it's the historic ones for the notions we want to derive, and also they make the true and the false, the computation of assigning true and false to atoms explicit. And that's actually why I, want, I prefer this now. Uh, but again, we will look at, at, uh, at the other point of view at the end of the respective uh, sections. Now, once we have uh, committed to this representation, we can talk about some properties. So one is, for instance, we can say that such a partial interpretation is conflicting. And conflicting here means that um, we have put a variable, or we have assigned a variable both true and false. And then there is, of course, the, the, the case where we have a, a, a three-valued interpretation that is free of any unknown values, where we have assigned true and false to all the variables, and this guy is called total. So it's complete in the sense that we have assigned all variables, we have put all variables either in the true or in the false bucket, and we have not <coughs> put a variable, cloned a variable and put it both in the true and the false, so it's also non-conflicting. Okay, good. Then the other thing is, as I was saying at the beginning, we want to describe the, the a computational process where we successively assign more and more truth values, true and false, to the to the variables, and hence we also want to talk about when one partial interpretation or assignment, if you like, uh, is is obtained from another one or has less or more truth values. And this is done with these guys here. So we have two operations that generalize uh, well-known uh, set theoretic. Uh, um, operations, right? So if we have two partial uh, interpretations, we can say that one is contained in another if they are pairwisely contained in each other. And we can also union two of them by simply pairwisely, pairwisely unioning the components. Okay, so I think with this we are set. Uh, and we can now actually go on and see actually how these guys are used by our operators to compute certain models.